Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's cooking class. I'm Kathy Fisher and welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're gonna get started here in a minute. We're just gonna let some people get into the class before we dive in. But if you'd like to follow along with the recipe, we'll put the link to that in the comments section there. And you don't have to follow along. It's This recipe is not in my cookbook because it's a newer recipe. It's the black bean chili. Um, but I have my cookbook here anyway, just so you can know that I have that. So yeah, it's on my website, straightupfood.com. And along, uh, if you click on top recipes, um, it will be um, on the right side, kind of toward the top there. That sounds confusing. Um, anyway, look for the black bean chili and there's the link for it there. And yeah, we'll get started here in a minute. If you'd like to say hello, um, where you're from, that's always fun. We're on Facebook today and YouTube. I'm so excited about that. So we're reaching more people with our healthy cooking, healthy living, and yeah. So we'll just wait one more second here and I'll check my recipe. Okay. And by the way, my live cooking classes from my kitchen here are first and third Tuesdays of the month at 10 a.m. Pacific time right now. Hi, Diane. I'm making your enchilada casserole right now. Ooh, that's a great recipe. That is in the cookbook and it's also on my website, straightupfood.com. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of casseroles, but that one is so good. And it's it's kind of holds together with corn tortillas, like cooked and blended into the mixture. It's such a good one. Hey, Daryl. Hi, Yvette. So fun to see you guys live. I mostly work at home, so it's nice to have um, friends on the internet here. Um, yeah, you guys were doing the black bean chili today. The link is at the top of the comments there if you want to follow along. If you're not familiar with my cookbook, this is it. And again, this recipe is not in the cookbook because it's a newer recipe. But um, the cookbook um, lays flat because it has this great binding. It's got lots of colored pictures. This is the coleslaw recipe. Um, and if you want to get a copy, you can get it at straightupfood.com and sh in the shop link, or you can get it on Amazon. Either one works. If you want me to sign your cookbook, order it from my website, because then I'll send it out from my house and I can sign up for you. Um, okay. Hi, Nectaria. That's a very exotic name. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and turn my stove top on. All right, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in the bottom just because I don't like to heat pots and pans with nothing in them. Traditionally, people would use a lot of oil at this step and just put the oil in there and let it heat up, but I don't use any oil. I'm 100% plants, no added salt, oil, or sugar, and also gluten-free. So I just keep a little cup nearby to add a little bit of water when it's needed. And when that water starts um, bubbling up, then I know it's nice and hot and ready to put the, the goodies into. Hi, Sita. All right, so I have prepped a lot of stuff and I've got some stuff off to the side here, um, but I have also got some stuff that I haven't prepped just because I want to talk about it a little bit and just give you some ideas of um, how to chop. There's so many different ways to chop veggies. Oh my gosh, so many. But I'm just going to show you what I usually do. And this is what I'm going to use for my rubbish bowl. I wish I had another little counter right here. Um, but I'm just going to set this over here. All right. Um, hi, Jesse. Okay. So this is heating up. And I'm going to black bean chili, right? And I'm going to prepare my onion first. And this is just one yellow onion if you wanted to use a white onion, you could do that. You could even use a red onion if you wanted to. So I cut the top and the bottom off and there's a heart. Can you guys see that? I always see hearts. That's probably a good sign in my life. All right, so you cut the top and the bottom off so you have a nice, safe, solid surface on the bottom. And then 
you cut it again, and we're going to take off these annoying paper layers on the outside. Sometimes if this layer is a little leathery, I will take, or papery, I will take it off as well. All right. So I'm going to do that to the other. And if you were a person who didn't like onion, you could just leave the onion out. I'm really into variation, doing what works for you. Try not to abandon a recipe just because it has something that you don't like. You can always substitute. You can leave things out. And this is heating up nicely. This little portable stovetop does a great job. And then this is my five and a half quart La Crusade pot. Okay, I'm going to turn that down a little. And all my favorite kitchen tools are on my Amazon store. So if you want to check that out, um, we can put the link there for you. Okay, so normally, most of the time, I'll just use my chef's knife to chop my onion. I do a slice in the middle, and then I go on either side. There's so many ways to chop an onion. Just like a quarter inch width and then go across. And then once I get to this point, I just kind of flatten it and then I go across again. It just feels a little bit safer to do it that way. And then this is my bench scraper or my pastry scraper. And then I love to use this to put the ingredients into the pot. And we always saute onions first because they are just the bitterest. So doing this step helps them kind of calm down with the bitterness and brings out the sweetness in the onions. If you get kind of nervous, you can add a little bit of water. Some people like to do a dry saute, which is no water, which is fine with the idea that it um, allows for more flavor. You just have to keep your eye on it. Ooh, that's a fresh onion. The fresher it is, the more it's going to affect your eyes. Okay. So I also wanted to show you another way to cut an onion. You can use a chopper tool like this. This is a Xylis, Z-Y-L-I-S-S. -S. And I like chopper tools like this. There's the little blade in there. The thing is you do have to chop it a little to help it get going, which I'm kind of thinking if you're going to do that anyway, just do it this way. But you know, we're all different people. We like to do things differently. So I just wanted to give you another option. So we're going to put all these in the chopper. And then you just set the lid on and you pull the handle. And the more you pull, the smaller it gets. That looks good. Doesn't take much. Get. I always saw these little spatulas in the cooking store and I thought, well, who uses those? But I love them. Now that I have some, I love them. I use them for everything, little jars, um, stuff like this. Okay. So this is also great if you want to just make some quick salsa put all your ingredients in here and just pull it and it's ready to go. You don't have to dirty your food processor or your blender. And you can see it's getting a little bit brown on the bottom. That's fine. You don't want it to burn. A little brownness is fine, but I'm just going to add a little more water. And then we're also going to add some celery. So I've got most of it chopped, but I thought I would just mention this. This is um, a half of a celery rib. I don't like the big chunks of celery, so I will just cut down the center and then go across, and then I get smaller pieces that way. Celery is naturally high in sodium, so if you're missing your salt, if you're trying to decrease your salt or eliminate your salt, celery is a good thing to add to your food, as well as like tomato paste, tomato products, greens. All right, so we've got our onion, and we're going to put our bell pepper in, and I also didn't cut that yet, 
And by the way, if you guys have any questions while we're going along, just ask them and I will uh, check in periodically. Hey, Donna, I like to add hot water so the cold water doesn't cool down my foods. Yeah, you can add some hot water in there instead of the cold water that I'm doing if you like. Now I'm going to add a red bell pepper. You can cut your bell pepper across the top, kind of like a pumpkin. You can, um, the way I usually do it is just go down one of the, kind of go down one of the, the ribs there and then just open it up. And then you can pull out this whole seed bulb easily. And then I, these are edible, the white parts, but I do kind of take them off just so it just looks better without them, I think. And then I'm going to cut lengthwise about quarter inch wide pieces. If you can only find an orange or a yellow bell pepper or even a green one, you can use that too. But the red bell pepper is the sweetest of the bell peppers. So I generally go for that. And it's visually appealing, I think more appealing than the green or even the yellow. Whoops, there's a whole piece I missed. So all three of these ingredients are very typical for chilies. Uh, in traditional chili, we'll also have meat, we'll have a lot of salt, and we'll have a lot of oil. So we're going to leave all three of those things out. And we're just going to leave the things in that are health promoting. Because that's the whole idea with the way that I eat and the way that I cook, which is based on the True North Health Center's way of eating. And a word they use a lot is health promoting. And I just, I just love that because we're not just eating vegan, plant-based. We're eating in a way that actually promotes health. And what I do is I take mostly traditional recipes like chili, leave in all the ingredients for health promoting, take out the ones that aren't yet trying to make it look and taste as close to the original that we love as possible. Because it look, if it looks like what we're used to eating, then we're more excited to eat it. And especially if we're planning on sharing it with other people, friends, family who don't eat this way. Yeah, making it look like what they're used to eating is really helpful. And then, you know, once they try it, the usual um, response is, oh, this is so good. I can't believe how good. People always think healthy food is going to taste horrible. I think that's a holdout, holdover from the old days when healthy food was brown and bland. But it doesn't have to be. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. Hey, Dora. What is the size of the knife? This is an eight-inch chef's knife. The brand is Dragon. When I looked to add it to my Amazon store the other day, I did not see it. But um, I got this at the cutlery store in Santa Rosa, California. Yaxel, Y-A-X-E-L-L, -L, and then Dragon. I don't know if you can see that. So having an 8-inch chef's knife is really great. Keeping it sharp really makes cooking more enjoyable. And then the other knife, oh, I always do this. It's in the other room. Um, let me grab it real quick. Uh, and I'll show you the knife that I use less often. Oh, I think it's in the sink. I think it's in the sink. Yes. And it's dirty, but I'll show you anyway. This is the other knife that I use. This is my Max knife. And you can see this one's a little bit longer. So this is more of my everyday knife. And this is one I use to cut onions and butternut squash and cabbage. And when I really need to have a workhorse knife. And, you know, I didn't do a survey of all eight inch chef's knife. I'm sure there are many good ones out there. This one was about $130, $40. But I do have a couple knives in my Amazon store. I have the Mac and then I have a about $40 eight inch chef's knife if you want something more economical. All right, next step, 
is we're still in step one. We're going to add some garlic. And this is a similar tool to the one I showed you earlier. It's just a little chopper, Tupperware product. But this one's specifically for garlic. And I love it. I love this thing. I use it all the time. So we're going to use that. And these were big garlic cloves. It calls for about four. I'm only doing three because these are big. Uh, these two, I already took the skin off or the paper off the outside. So I'm just going to throw them in here. This one, I did not take the that white paper off, you know, that's on the outside. And I always show this, but not everybody watches every single video. So I got to repeat it. This is just a garlic sleeve. You put the clove in there, you give it a roll. And when it comes out, the paper should be completely off. And it is. I don't buy pre peeled garlic from the store in bags or pre chopped garlic because it usually comes in oil. I like doing it, even though it's a drag, I like just doing it as I need it because I find that the flavor is better. And I'm picky about that. Now, if I was just needing one clove of garlic for something, I wouldn't use this. But since we're doing more than one, this comes in really handy. So same thing. The more you pull, the smaller it gets. That looks good. All right. So we're going to add the garlic now. Typically, garlic is added after the onions have sauteed a bit just because it's a little more delicate and tends to want to burn easier. So that's why we add it in later. Okay. If you don't want to use water, you can use vegetable stock. You can buy salt-free vegetable stock. You can make vegetable stock. But I never do because I just find that with using water, it works great. After the vegetables have cooked, we put in our dried herbs and spices. It's going to taste great. All right. We're going to put in a tablespoon of chili powder. And I'm just using an ancho, mild ancho chili powder here. There's so many different types of chili powder. If you like things hot and spicy, you can add a hot and spicy chili powder. I'm not a super hot and spicy. Oh, I haven't even opened this yet person. So is that going to fit in there? You know, it's a little full and this is a little big. So I think I'm going to do two half tablespoons instead. Okay. So there's one. And this is just has dried ancho chili powder. Sometimes you can get chili powder like blends as well that has other ingredients in it. Um, but today I'm just using this one. And I got this at my local farmer's market, but often I will go to the spice shop of which we have two nearby. Hi, Amy. Such a cute spatula. I know. I love my little spatulas. Hey, Val. Yes. This garlic tool that I already put away is great. I think it's like when I saw how much it was, um, cause it, that one was a gift, but it's a little pricey. It's like $30 or something, but it's worth it. It's worth it not to have sticky, stinky fingers, cutting boards, and all that. All right, so we're going to put in some cumin seeds. I don't use whole cumin seeds very often, but they're kind of fun, especially in chili. If you don't have any, you could use ground cumin. You could leave it out. Um, but I think a little whole fennel seed or cumin seed is fun sometimes. So I'm just putting in a quarter teaspoon. I'm not going to go overboard. And it's fun later when you're eating the chili and you get a little seed. It's just kind of special. It's like a little surprise. Ooh, it's starting to look like chili. All right. I-58 Farms. That Yaxel made of a very good American steel. Oh, okay. So there's some knife info for us. Very comfortable handles. Um, hey, Jesse. Hey, Melissa. Okay, moving on. So that is step one. We're done with step one. And step two, we're going to add the remaining ingredients. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned this. These are my favorite measuring spoons. I know I mention it in every video that I do, but I just love them. They have a magnet in the center. 
So they stick together and I have never lost any of these. They also have two ends. These are in my Amazon store if you're interested. All right, so next on the list, we have some black beans. I'm gonna go ahead and add my water. I'm gonna skip ahead and add one and a half cups of water here. And then I'm gonna add three cans of black beans, which is about five and a quarter cups. And I'll show you the kind of canned beans I used here in a sec. You can also make your beans from scratch at home. That's always an option. So this is the kind of canned beans I use today, West Bray Natural, organic black beans, no salt added. I really like these. I also like the Eden brand. And I do drain the um, liquid off of the beans in the cans. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It's just a habit I got in and I want mine rinsed. But if you do use the liquid from the beans, you might want to decrease the water by a little bit because otherwise it'll be a little bit too watery. It'll be more soupy and less chili-ish. All right, now we're gonna put in one 26 ounce box. Have you guys seen those pomy boxes of strained or chopped tomatoes? I didn't see those at the store I was at when I shopped for this recipe. So I'm just using cans. And this is two cans of diced tomatoes, the good old Muir Glen brand, no salt added here. And by the way, if you're serving this food to someone who eats salt, just put a little salt out for them and they can add their own. But I think by the time you get done making all of this, you're not gonna really, you're not gonna want salt. If you're a diehard salt eater, like every single day, yeah, you'll say, oh, I miss the salt, it needs salt. Um, but that changes on your palate. The more you eat, go without, and it you won't miss it after a while. Hey, Jim. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Craney. Craney? Israel. Cool. Um, all right. Love Eden Foods, black beans, soybeans. I don't buy those very much. I see them on the shelf, the black soybeans, but I don't ever buy them. They just sound weird, um, but I will try them. Okay, so I'm gonna add my two cans of diced tomatoes and you can use crushed tomatoes, strained tomatoes, it doesn't really matter. And for this, I am leaving the juice in. Cause that's just the good juice from the tomatoes. All right. <clears throat> Let me turn this up just a little bit. All right. <clears throat> I put in my water and next we're going to put in some cauliflower and some Yukon gold potatoes. And Okay, I'm just keeping an eye on that because I might be running out of fuel there. I might have to change it. Um, okay, so we've got, what did I say? One and a half cups of cauliflower florets right here, and they don't have to be super small. I already pre-cooked these, so we won't have to just stand here and do nothing for a half hour. That doesn't really work for a live cooking show. And here are the potatoes. This is just one Yukon gold about this size. I like mine peeled. If you don't want to peel yours, you don't have to, but I do not like boiled potato skins. They just taste bitter to me. All right, so we're gonna stir this in. It is a little bit on the thicky side, so I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of water. Hey, Jesse, the black soybeans are really delicious. They don't have the meaty texture that I get from the black turtle beans. I'll have to try those. Okay, doesn't this look good? Okay, so what's kind of unusual about this chili is that it's got cauliflower and potatoes in it. I don't think chili normally has potatoes in it. 
I'm paranoid. The flame's still going. Um, but I don't like to always do things the normal way. And I like hardiness. Like I want to have this just for one meal and that's all I have to eat and I'll be full. So adding things like cauliflower and just one potato, you could even do a sweet potato instead of white potato, that's going to make it more filling. Um, so I think that's all of our ingredients except for the garnish. Okay. And let's see, what else can I say about this? If you didn't have black beans, you could use another kind of bean. You could use a pinot bean if you want, or another kind. Sometimes I love to buy these, let's see if I have one. I love to buy these mixtures, the organic chili beans. You could use those, and then you're gonna get three different types of beans. What kind of beans? Kidney beans, black beans, pinto beans. So I love keeping these on hand. And let's see, if you didn't have cauliflower, could you use broccoli? Eh, probably. I haven't tried that, but you probably could. I used a Yukon Gold today. You could use a russet if you want. If you're a person who doesn't do tomatoes, I don't know how a chili would be without tomatoes. That's a pretty integral ingredient. Um, it'd probably still taste good. You can't really go wrong with savory cooking with plant foods. It's it's just so good. And sometimes I just get in the zen of stirring and I just want to stand here and stir. Okay. All right, so we're just going to jump ahead normally um, in step two. This tells you to put the, the heat down to medium low and cook um, uncovered for 30 minutes until the cauliflower is nice and tender and the potatoes are also nice and tender. And at that point we can eat it or we can do the optional step of blending a portion of it. And that is step three. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I have my Vitamix here ready. And I'm just gonna take about two to three cups of this. And this is a half cup ladle. So there's one cup. And there's two cups-ish. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a blend. Okay. It'll be completely smooth. You can still have some texture to it. It's just nice sometimes to have a thicker base other than just that thin brothy base. Probably didn't need to add that extra water in because now it looks pretty watery, um, but it looks good. I think it looks right on par with chili. And again, if you want things hot and spicy, you can add some red pepper flakes, some cayenne pepper, whatever your hot, hot chili powder, whatever your hotness of choice is. Hey, Alexandra, could this be done in an instant pot? Yeah, totally. I would have to think about the timing on that. Um, and I think you would probably want to use the beans that are pre-cooked because cooking black beans from dry, to, when I do it, I cook them for 41 minutes in the Instant Pot. And I don't think you would want all this other stuff to cook for that long. So you probably have to stop, you know, most of the way through, add the cauliflower and the potatoes and all the other stuff, and then put it back on to cook some more. I just don't like opening my Instant Pot in the middle. So I try to avoid making recipes that do that, but um, I'm sure there's a way. Okay. All right, you guys. So doesn't that look good? So I'm gonna go ahead and serve some of this up. I love when I have cooking demo days because then I have great lunches and leftovers for dinner. And I think in the instructions, I said blend, put all of the cauliflower pieces into the blender. I don't think you really need to do that. I don't know who wrote that. It was my alter chef, Eco. Um, okay. And then for garnish, you can put avocado on. You can put, what else? Oh, 
cilantro. I'm just going to use some chopped green onions just for a little extra appeal there. Oh, that green just kind of makes it look extra good. All right. Doesn't that look good? Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so there we go. That was pretty easy. I know I had some stuff prepped, but it really does come together pretty easily, especially if you use canned beans, canned tomatoes. You could even chop your um, cauliflower and your potatoes, you know, kind of get everything ready in the morning. And then at night when you're doing dinner, just assemble it all kind of like I did here. And it comes together very quickly. The more you simmer this, the little bit more flavor it's gonna have. And then the next day after it's been refrigerated, I think soups and stews always taste better the next day. So um, this would be great to freeze as well. This looks fantastic. Yay. And with the pre-cooked veggies, I know, so easy. You could even pre-cook your own veggies like I did today. Um, but yeah, that is it, you guys. If you want to see more videos of mine, they're on my YouTube channel, Straight Up Food. I put pictures of what I'm eating for lunch and dinner and breakfast on my Facebook page a lot. So follow me there if you don't already. I know a lot of you guys do. That's kind of my main social media spot. Um, hey, Jim. Looks amazing. Thank you. Um, and what else? Yeah, check out the cookbook. If you don't have it, it's also in digital form if you prefer that. But um, yeah, it's a great book. It's a great book, especially if you're starting out new or to give to somebody who might be starting out new. And check out my Amazon store with all my favorite tools. And that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for showing up today. How'd we do on time? We did good. And I'll see you in two weeks. We'll be in November then. And I'll probably be making something holiday-ish. I'm not sure what that is yet. Um, you have a few questions from the audience. Um, is this recipe in your cookbook? Um, this one is not because my cookbook's been out for five years. This one is on my website for free, though. So just go to straightupfood.com. And you can search black bean chili, or if you kind of scroll down on the homepage, it'll say most recent recipes, and it's kind of in there. And are there any more questions besides that one? I think that, I think that might be it. Uh, can uh, how do how do I keep my enamel cast iron pan so clean? Mo oh, I didn't see the end of that question. Um, most other enameled cast iron pans I see are in awful shape. Gosh, I don't know. I don't use any metal stuff in it. That helps. And when I wash my pans, I like clean them really well. Um, Cause sometimes they can get brown on the bottom, especially if they have a light coating like this. So I just wash them with a normal sponge, you know, like the scrapey side of the, the sponge, but I don't do anything special. Sita, thanks so much. You always make the best dishes. I just printed the recipe. Good. Yeah, you can print the recipe from the website. For some reason, at the very top of the page, the print recipe isn't working. But if you scroll down a little bit, there's another print recipe that is working. We're working on that um, with my tech person. Um, all right. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you later. If you want to know, keep up more with what I'm doing, you can subscribe to my free newsletter at straightupfood.com. And that is it. All right. Bye, guys.